the fence is still there. All right, so today they go and put up this fucking camera. See that? Hi. That's pointed at us in our house. That's an invasion of privacy beyond everything. That is an actual privacy violation. That is actually a punishable crime. I'm pretty sure it's even a felony. Right to quiet and join Well, they're not. To privacy. We'll find out because I, I actually saw Judson and you did too. Pointed directly Stringing the wire happened. up, sending his man up there. And we're meantime filling out a no trespassing. So we're get uh can you help Lupe deliver that? Yeah. And we did. Filled out the trespass arrest form. Yeah, yeah. Can Send you have Lupe that back that? to the LAPD Northeast Division. And if you notice, the fence is still there. Alright, so the today they go and put up this fucking camera. Our house, our extra building that needs to be restored, locked see up that? and boarded up Hi. and fence. That's pointed at us in our house. Wanna see it again? That's an invasion of privacy. Here you go. See that camera? That's the camera. That's our dish. They ripped down our dish, which was still in service. And here he is. My fence. Go and put up this fucking camera. That's my redwood fence, which you see in another photograph at some point. On the ground, you see in detail. You can see in detail on the ground a green fence. That's from the last fence that they tore down. It's hard to keep up with the number of fences they ripped down and break into my yard with. Those are my lights. See the one, two, three, four clip-on lights on the rain gutter. Those are our security lights. They work, and they steal them. They steal our fence. They steal our wood. They rip open our back windows and climb in day in and day out. They don't go through the front door. Who goes in through the front door? Normal people? Yeah. Are they normal? No. They go through the windows every day because they don't want people to see laborers constructing, day laborers doing construction, when they have a contractor's license, it's suspended. So they send in their people in through the back every single day. And at this point, they're trying to, re to get a result. The result they want is to have us supposedly steal their cameras or something because they want to have some sort of punishable crime. Well, first of all, it's called aggravated trespass. Second of all, it's called, you're putting cameras on my property? Are you insane? Third of all, what is the date of this image? Date of this image is... The actual image is... I want to say it's October 23rd, but... It'll say right here. 2003... 2020... On the third day of the fourth month. So that's 4-3-2020. Twenty oh three oh four number fifteen This was uploaded on October twenty third, but the video is stated twenty oh three oh four. So it's either March fourth, which it's not. Or it's April 4th. And I can tell you from the photos around it which one it is for sure. Well, that's even more confusing. 1998, 1226. Okay, maybe it is October 23rd, 2020. August, September, October. Well, I guess that would make sense. That's actually, that's more proper. Let me see. Yeah. Well, 
Well, that shows you how long they sat on their laurels. It's hard to remember. So much has happened. Construction. Yes. How do I know this is funded? Suspended. Resourceful developments, uh, aka resourceful construction. What's their other contractor's license number? 1003215 and related license number 958597. Both suspended. Then now they are re. What's the word for it? Not suspended, but restricted or revoked. Date is. What did that say? The date was. Said. There we go. So it is 10 21 2020 was the revocation. This is 10 23, supposedly. So they got uploaded between then and then automatically. I think that's that day, though. This is the madness. This is not crazy man has been doing. Digging and jackhammering. This is the resourceful mm, construction. The waste and the nuisance that yes. they create and the noise complaint that they actually call on us are actually them. They're the ones creating yeah. the noise. And now, today, today's date is. This is Dudson Williams. Can you secure the mother? We must call that. Richard. His date is. This is them working illegally in my Today's date is. Richard Judson Williams. Resourceful Construction Inc. Resourceful Construction Inc. Resourceful Developments. Today's date is artifacts that we collected from that house from around it in the dirt that shows that this place is a historical um, historical site these are all over a hundred year old objects or 
50 years old or in some instances, but mostly over 100. Garage door, fucking, I'm sorry, barn door. Medicine bottle, ball milk jar. That's a spur from the 1864. It's got silver in it. It's from the Mexican-American War. It's a very specific cowboy spur. Right there on the left of the milk bottle. You got the original horseshoe. A hoof, a hoof lock. Pretty interesting. Medicine bottle. Hand planer. Lots of glassware. From medicine bottles from pharmacy. Marbles. Um, foot lever from some sort of bar. A handle from a fucking, pardon me, my friend, from a shotgun. Weights from Paramount Pictures. Glass insulator from an electrical line. Old liquor bottles. Old Coca-Cola bottles. That bottle's from 1921. There's this uh, police saying, Ongoing neighbor dispute between tenants of landlord and keep the peace advanced to go to court regarding ownership. They are not the landlords. They are not tenant issues here. And the cops did not keep the police. And that is... Supposedly from 7 9 24, that'd be uh, August. Or no, wait, July. July 9th. Yeah, that's the incident we're discussing in which um, Judd assaulted me, had me choked, splashed turpentine on my wife, aggravated, the tr aggravated trespass was uh, ensued by breaking in through the side of the hillside by taking an extremely steep incline hill that's all sandy and breaking in through the uncharted territory of the side of the hill to bypass my gate and sneak into the side then going in around to my turp to my uh electrical panel and pouring turpentine on it and then refusing to leave when being told that he was trespassing over and over and then using his man to assault me and laughing about it and then telling him to stop at it as he was about to kill me after he shoved my wife and fuck pushed her down and tried to choke her too he videoed the whole thing I shot him with a hose so he'd stop because he was terrifying us and he wouldn't leave and he was sending his man to assault me and choke me and my wife. And I used the only non-violent, non-violent, non-threatening method of dispersion as possible, yet they would only leave when the police were on the phone, called, and they knew that they were in trouble and then they ran out through the side again after faking on video that a whole bunch of different things were happening going on. He was crafting a narrative with his camera. So he shows the video to our neighbor, Paul, and Paul says he said he saw exactly what I'm saying. He's like, I was defending us because we were being assaulted in our house and trespassed on, and they wouldn't leave, and I was choked. And Paul said he's willing to testify to that, so I hope I hope that they bring that video to the surface because it can only show one thing. We were trespassed on through aggravated trespass, and we were assaulted. And we were defending ourselves in our house after we asked them to leave repeatedly. And they crafted a narrative that was bullshit, saying that our electric meter wasn't paid for. We've had bills for our electric meter the whole time we've been here, including the entire time that they've been stealing our utilities. Because they've been wired up illegally and stealing our electricity and causing over a $10,000 bill to accrue for 1968. And stealing off of us before that. And that's just insulting, because nobody in their right mind is asked by LEDWP to go onto someone else's land or even near them, to go put turpentine on a electric meter to clean it off or not. My electric meter was covered in paint because I painted my house black and I spilled some paint on my electric meter, which I'm entitled to. It's mine. But the LEDWP never cared about that. They came to my house once a month to check the meter because we're old and don't have a modern meter. They would leave a note that says they are coming on a certain day and time and to make sure the gate's unlocked. And we would do that. And we would usually escort them there because we always had a question or two because we have two meters for some reason on our house because there used to be a second unit below us, which is now our house as well, our, our, our storage and our bedroom to be that we've been remodeling. And there, 
always concerned about it being energized on its own and whether or not it's not energized because we don't want it to be and we don't want it hooked up to any wall plugs or anything until the house is ready to have a new electrical system at which point we're trying to work entirely off wind turbine and solar so there'd be no interest in us paying another $19 a month plus the entire charges that they do for their unregulated meter that's spinning wildly out of control from a leak in the electricity somewhere but we still have that kind of annoying so who would want that i have like another ten thousand dollar bill on those two meters for no reason because of this like electricity problem that we've been ensued with ever since like somebody tampered with our electric meter which is an old knob and tube but then somebody decided to try and rewire a piece of it when we weren't here one day messed it all up and left some line open-ended and now we've got a short in the system and the electricity is just pouring out of the second year meter at all times it's making a huge bill and leddwp never can tell us exactly what's wrong just says you got to get an electrician she'd love to but when the bill's out of control and we don't see any power from it and we don't know where to even plug anything to it it's kind of retarded just like the same people leddwp charges us for sewers we don't have a sewer we had a septic tank which richard judson williams purposely crushed with his tractors driving over it repeatedly and shoveling out around it and then crushing it some more which you'll see momentarily in a big green slimy sl like slathering mess of hell his intention is to remove us of having a bathroom how do we know that his other man that he sent to pretend being our friend who first robbed us of our ring What's his name? Norman Rydell. He tells us, "Don't isn't it true you can't like live in a place that has no working bathrooms? Didn't didn't somebody do that to you?" And we'd never told him before, and he knew already about what Judson had done. And as he was finally asked to leave out of our house for the last time, because he was obviously working for the man, he says, "I'm just sick of you, you people. You're all lying about ownership." Well, no, we weren't, but he was giving his cards away, saying, "You people," as in the people he worked for as well. And he's been seen numerous times talking to the Shapiros, going down the side of the hill about 25 times, which leads right into their backyard. And nobody said anything to him. That's because he works for them. Same man also set off explosives in our house, shot our house, shot out our house's window with like a, a, a BB gun, as well as Richard has shot out our house's window with a BB gun. We've had multiple windows break this year. We've had over 50 BBs found inside. And over four different explosives set off in our yard between an M80 and homemade smoke bombs that are like so devastating you can't you can't breathe for like 20 minutes. And we just recently reported it to the fire marshal because he told us while he was here one day that he did that to the Atwaters as well. That the Atwaters were smoked out until the fire department would have to arrive. It was so bad, but they couldn't drive their fire truck up here because it's too hard to get up to this hill, which is what we have the problem of too. So our house could literally burn down and this psychopath is doing these things and Richard's hiring him to do it. These people needed to be reported because they're not only involved in manufacturing of homemade explosives, but Judd's other worker, Norman Rydell, he's up to he's up to making drugs, illicit drugs of some sort in his trailer that he squats in front of the people's house that he was supposed to be subcontracting for. But he has since started sleeping with the lady, the, the man's wife, who he's doing the job for and wouldn't leave for the last four and a half years. So he's had a trailer in front of this guy's house. For four and a half years where he has lived harassed the man and caused so many problems that the guy's life is almost in divorce it's like it's a known felon norman rydell is a known felon he's within 500 feet of a school zone i think that the neighborhood should know that and should get these people out of here the shapiros are employing known felons to stalk our neighborhood and cause people problems so that they can then buy up their homes for cheap after they've been destroyed by subcontractors who do a shitty job Sí, 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 sí,
The house used to have two doors on it, one in the front and one in the back. Now it only has one door on the whole house. That's so crazy. They cemented over the second door, so now there's a fire hazard that you can't escape in a fire unless you go through the front door, which is insanity. Same goes for us. They created a fire hazard by making a 10-foot spite wall that blocks us from our backyard that lets us down to our lower property so that we can leave the property. So now if we have a fire, we must leave through the top so we can't get out through the bottom, which is absolutely insane that they barricaded our house in. They built a fucking spite wall, pardon me, I'm so angry, in the middle of my own fucking property, right down the middle of it. Richard Judson Williams hasn't been an owner, never will be. His wife had temporarily purchased it without any money, no money, no money down, no interest of any kind, was actually transferred, she just does it illegally, with slander of title. Through a non-grant deed, she calls it a grant deed, it's a quick claim, it's been noted as a quick claim on like 10 different property reports. The print transfer before it was a quick claim as well, from lending home to Williamson Savings Trust FSB, which was not its securitized um, entity that was along with it. They just did that to hide it as though it was a securitized, bifurcated transfer to the other um, securitized part portion of of a lending home transaction, but the lending home had never actually securitized it with any organization. They had kept it in their private portfolio of loans that they'd sent out. They manage all their loans actually that way. It's not quite a special thing. They manage all their loans as though they're privatized micro loans that would then eventually be sold for securitization. But they didn't do that yet. And they never did. In fact, all they did was transfer it to Lending Home Funding Corporation to the William Savings Trust FSB so that you would think that that's what was going on. But first of all, that was a quick claim as well. And, and before that, they transferred it to themselves illegally. And that was a quick claim as well. So what do you call three quick claim transfers back to back? I think they call that fraud. And who did them all? A guy who's called a servicing manager named Kevin Chase Scott. And then Kevin Chase Scott does it from Willington Savings Trust FSB, NRP Mortgage Trust One, to um, Chenny Shapiro by using the terms uh, with power of attorney as attorney in fact. But everyone knows, first of all, a trust must use a substitution of trustee or any trust sort of situation with a deed of trust. But this is a deed of trust and a trust organization and so the trust organization must use a substitution of trustee and must also use that for the deed of trust transferring to another hand it wasn't an american first title that was the that was the um escrowing slash um uh, trust or trustee trustee but the trustee was never substituted to quality loan service yeah, quality loan service appears on the on the map as a replacement with no notice. We call them and notify them of that and that they can't go to sale because of that and other things and that we are here and we've been here for five years or four years at that point. And they said, fuck us, literally, point blank. <laughs> Screw you, fuck you, hung up the phone on me.
Then they changed my password and username, which I had made in quality loan service, so I could look at the um, information from Jill Sandair, which was the username, to Jackass. So the next time I logged in under my name, the name suddenly switched to Jackass. Thought that was a little bit poignant and rude, but nonetheless, the sale never happened on the day they said. On They said on December 12th, there would be a sale. The sale never went through. No one listed it at the sale. No one mentioned it at the sale, at the fountain sale. Just suddenly didn't happen, even though we called them and they said they were doing it anyway. Then on December 24th or December 29th or December 21st, I can't remember which, I'll have to double check. It suddenly transferred itself from Lending Home Funding Corporation, Wellington Savings Trust FSB now, but as attorney in fact by Lending Home, to Kenneth Shapiro. And then the next day, it sudden, suddenly said, Chenny Shapiro, from Kenny Shapiro to Chenny Shapiro. As though there were a mistake that was corrected and updated. I believe because Kenny Shapiro would be having dual agency issues, which he would be anyways, because he's the buyer and the seller, even though it was through Coldwell Bankers, it suddenly went to Silverwood Properties. Kenny Shapiro, who sold it to his daughter, Chenny Shapiro, for the clients who would have been Wellington Savings Trust FSB, but now they say it's lending home. Now, and without a substitution of trustee, and the reconveyance on the original transfer from lending home to Wellington Savings Trust FSB, now to Chenny Shapiro, well, that's two transfers, first of all. Actually, that's three. But the reconveyance would have had to have been between Lending Home and Wellington Savings Trust. But it doesn't even come until after Chenny Shapiro. And it's for the transfer after Chenny Shapiro. And it's a reconveyance and substitution of trustee on the 28th of the following month, I believe. Or the 28th, yeah, the 28th of March. Now, she says the transfer happens on the 6th. Yeah, she says it happens on the 3rd. But the, hap the transfer doesn't happen until the 19th of March, legitimately. The recording of it was on the 6th. The transfer doesn't come until the 19th. The reconveyance doesn't come until the 28th, so I would say the 28th. So, all ownership claims were fraudulent in the first place because what's even worse is that Lending Home then shows in their SEC filings and their form six exemptions that no money transferred hands of any kind and then in Lanceman investment the people she takes out a mortgage from it says no money transferred hands as well and during the months of January to the end of April in 2020 both entities claim no money's transferred hands between them in any shape or form in fact letting home says no money transfers any hands of all during those three months which I can believe because they knew about COVID coming on, and COVID does hit. And first of all, when Chenny gets her mortgage on the 6th, supposedly, COVID was already in full swing by the 1st. By the 3rd, it was even more known that mortgagers were not giving out loans anymore. Because it was too much of a craziness going on with these freezes being threatened for rent um, rent and rent r forgiveness being like considered and and people being terrified because COVID was like this brand new thing and everything everywhere was just like, holy shit. So no appraisals could happen. The stay at home order was issued. No appraisals could happen. No inspectors could come. Nobody could check on any of your situations that w would be necessary for clearing a house for sale. So all houses will stop being sold. Realtors started putting on sales on hold and they were virtual only. So how Chenny got a $505,000 loan on a house that she paid nothing for, and then her employee, Joshua Morganson, who she transfers it to, for zero dollars, no money. He says he paid cash, there was no money who exchanged hands, zero dollars. And it says it was nine dollars on one platform, but it says zero dollars in every other. So no money transferred hands, and they do that, and they ask for an exemption for taxes, because they say it was a transfer from one of uh, the same party to the same party. Well, that's not the same party. That's your employee. And secondly, any transfer for an employee, any gift over $75 is a taxable entity. And it transferred out of a 401k and into a corporation. It went from Chenny Shapiro 401k, which first of all, her 401k, the Chenny Shapiro 401k, is improperly addressed on the transfer. It is called Chenny Shapiro 401k Trust 
dated January 1, 2011. Well, that's a much different name than Tenny Shapiro 401k. And secondly, she's this trustee, and she's the beneficiary, and she's also involved in um, being the sponsor. She's the sponsor, the sponsee, the beneficiary. So she puts an a she gets an asterisk added to her uh, her transfer, but the asterisk isn't noted by the notary, as in the notary didn't do it. So she changes the name on her app on her transfer on her own to say this this the trustee of the Chenny Shapiro Trust Chenny Shapiro and the Chenny Shapiro 401k trust dated January 1, 2011. But the actual trust is called Chenny Shapiro 401k. So I don't see if you notice what I'm saying here, but Chenny Shapiro is lying about the name of the 401k on her deed of trust slash grant deed. And why does she do that? I don't know, but here's what's even crazier. Chenny Shapiro doesn't have a 401k until 2017. Yet she's been doing this for a number of years. Just like her mother uses a 401k to transfer property, but doesn't have a 401k. It is noted by form 5500 in the IRS that this is non-existent or also not existent until 2017. And she then doesn't file again yet. There was a filing in 2017-18 and never ever again. We're now in 2021, almost 2022. Any non-filing for up to three years is considered an escape or a tax escape. But um, a tax... Uh, Step fraud occurs when someone continues to do more than one step of fraud, but this is two incidents of the same type of fraud where she never reports her taxes on this place. And then her form is filled out so badly and wrongly, she says she will not be audited by anyone else, third party, she refuses that. Yet the phone number goes to Robert Hall and Associates, and the EIN is still undisclosed, but the EIN looks like it's Robert Hall and Associates at the moment. Either way, the phone number going to Robert Hall & Associates means that an accountant filled it out for her, yet she states she filled it out for herself. So the question is, is she frauding or, or, or are they frauding? But either way, somebody's frauding, and it's obvious, because she also has $2,035,000 $2, in there, something like that. Well, she's transferred more than four properties in this last year, each being about $500,000 apiece in that year, and over over 20 properties through her 401k and that would be more than two million dollars and when you your 401k has pro property leave it it's considered assets that have been taken out and that's a taxable event and she's never taxed on any of it because she never reports her taxes also she starts a 401k and uses it improperly and not like a solo 401k like a traditional 401k but she has never had a job from any company before, ever before. So where does her retirement come from? If she was doing a solo 401k, I'd understand, but this is a standard 401k. And she's using it improperly at all times for the sake of hiding assets. And then her husband goes into bankruptcy because of their money they owe. They owe $220,000 to the state insurance compensation fund for fraud against um, during David Glazier and... I don't know who else, but they got caught. They got caught for not paying their insurance on their employees. And then they lied throughout that entire case. They lied through the entire David Glazer case. They lied through the D entire Molansky case, all of which happened simultaneously. And their solvency issues, in which they were supposed to pay for the return of the house by buying it back in full for David Glazer. Yet they keep on saying that they can't find a lender and they can't find the money and that they have to use their own down payment. Ooh, boo-hoo. But none nonetheless, Kenny Shapiro buys four five more houses during that time period when she told David Glazer she couldn't afford to pay him back after the judgment against her. So for two extra years, she keeps on holding out, not able to pay. Then she says she's going to live in the house. And then who actually transfers it back to him? Richard Judson Williams, not Jenny Shapiro. Richard Judson Williams is the one who grant deeds it back into himself. And they give him money eventually. But... What do they do in the meantime? They just flip four or five more houses with all that money that they had the whole time. 
and their lender who keeps on giving it to them at the same time, even though they're in bad faith with their lender at all times. Their lender just seemingly doesn't care about shareholders or anybody else. He just keeps on giving them more and more and more money and never putting them in default. They defaulted on my house twice, both Marcus and Chenny Shapiro currently in default. 100%. On April 1st and on July 1st, both of them went in de default, 2021. Yet, are they fucking still in charge of their case and the judge doesn't hear my orders for telling him that they don't have standing because they don't have any ownership because their their lender would be in default and that would mean that they had no rights of re, re uh, rights of to restore their mortgage because their acceleration had already occurred well that's the case george bird doesn't give a shit about the law or anybody else he's just a selfish old prick <laughs>